Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome to my SoRare channel and in today's video I'll be showing you guys how you can get started on SoRare for as little as only one pound. Welcome to the video everybody. As mentioned, I'll be showing how you can get started with trading on SoRare. So in this scenario, we're going to imagine we've been left with the bare bones in our SoRare account. Maybe we've gone ahead and bought a big team and we've got a little bit left over, or maybe you're just getting started. I'll show you how you can put those funds to work in SoRare. Before we get started though, if you do find this video useful, I would massively appreciate it if you could smash the like button and subscribe for more content like this. That will be greatly, greatly appreciated appreciated as we get close to 500 subscribers and drop a comment down below about your favorite trading methods. Now, if you're someone who hasn't got started in SoRare yet and you're looking to do so, then click the link in the description down below. Not only will that get you started on SoRare, but if you sign up from that screen, you'll be linked with me. And not only do I get a little kickback from that from SoRare, but also it's a win for you because if you go ahead and you buy five cards off the new card auctions market, you will get a new card for completely free that it can be worth a pretty significant chunk of money. So definitely do that. At least use someone's affiliate link. And with that being said, let's get in to my one pound trading tip. And to keep you guys in the loop, I've also just won this reward from the So Rare Global Cup. It's an Armindo Sieb Limited, um, a tier two limited card, a under 23 forward. So I'm very, very happy to get that considering I'm all about wonder kids. I mean, I'm a massive fan of Football Manager, as you know, from my other channels. So yeah, uh, the Wonder Kids are great. And speaking of Wonder Kids, they are involved in today's trading method. And I've probably kept you guys waiting a little bit too long already. So let's get right in to this trading method. So what we're going to do, like we say, imagine we've only got one pound or so in your account. I wouldn't let it sit there. I would make that money work for you. And also at the same time, add to your so rare gallery. Now we're going to be heading to the manager sales market. This is where you can buy cards from other managers that are being sold. And you can see there's a bunch here all for different prices, all different rarities. What we're going to do is a two-step trading method where we're going to basically filter in on Wonder Kids. Now, there's nothing stopping you necessarily from doing part one of this method with a player of any age. I just think young players, Wonder Kids, have a lot higher of an upside of a potential reward. Now, we'll be using limiteds in this video, but you could definitely go ahead and do the exact same thing with rare cards. But for now, we're going to do it with limiteds because, of course, we're talking about a really low budget here, but this method can scale up higher if you have more money to work with or if you earn more money from using this method. So we're going to filter on the limited scarcity. From there, you have a choice if you want to, to filter in on the right SO5 league for you. Now for me, I'm a big fan of Champion Europe and Challenger Europe. I'm gonna focus in on Champion Europe in this video, but there's nothing stopping you doing this for all star. Now, just to let you know, I did get a lot of inspiration from this video from a great YouTuber called So Rare Adventures. So I'll link him down below. He talks more about how to do this method with older players. So yeah, if you want to check that out, feel free. But when we're talking about Wonder Kids, this is what I want you to do. So select the league that you're interested in. For me, Champion Europe has the greatest upside in terms of a card's value. And we're going to filter the age of our players down to anywhere you want below 21, 20 ish. You could go all the way to 18, but it's gonna limit your options, even 17, 16. But for me, I'm going to say the age of 20. So now we're getting every single player that's been listed by another manager that's a limited card in a Champion Europe under the age of 20. So far, so good, right? All easy to follow, hopefully. Well, now we're going to switch this from newly listed to lowest price, and we will see the cheapest of the cheap players for 70p or so, and this is what we're looking for. Now, how are we gonna make profit on these? Well, there's two ways to do so. Now, this is definitely a grind, and it won't be super easy, but if you're really working with a limited budget and you wanna go ahead and do this, there's definitely profit to be made, and that is to find a player who doesn't appear too often. So if you saw a million Moy Paras here, I wouldn't go for him, but we can see there's a Moy Para for 70p, and the next cheapest Moy Para card is 90p. So we can see there's a potential of a 20p upside there. So what I would do is make an offer for this guy for say 60p, 50p, every penny is going to count using this method. And then if you're able to get this player, which there's a good chance that you can by making an offer, if you don't know how to do that, 
click the player and click trade and you can put in your value. But yeah, if you made that offer and you got him for say 60p, you could then list him as the cheapest Moy Para on the market for 80p or so, you'll likely get a sale and you'll make a little bit of profit. Now that might not seem like a lot, but now you might have £1.50 to work with, £1.80, something like that. And you can start finding players that don't appear as often and try and find those big big potential increases in price. For example, if we take Diego Mendes here, I haven't seen too many of him so far. There he is at one pound. Where is the next Diego Mendes? One pound 10. Okay, maybe not the best example there. What about this one? Samuel Yippy Yippy. What a phenomenal name. More like Yippy Yippy, I would have thought. You can buy him for one pound. Let's say we negotiated that to 90p, for example. The next Samuel Yippy on the market is, I just checked, somewhere about one pound 50, one pound 60. So you could then sell him for one pound 40, let's say, and you could definitely make some profit there, which is awesome. Now, if you want to filter your search a little bit more to find some players that might have a little bit more interest in them, what you can do is you can go to your last five average score and turn it up by one. Don't worry, by the way, if this seems quite basic, we'll be talking a little bit more about part two to this trading method soon. But straight away, you can see these are players that have played at least a little bit of game time in their last five games, and their price is a lot higher than the lowest price of the previous cards we were looking at. Because of course, these guys are playing. So again, you're going to look for someone who could potentially have a pretty big upside. Let's take this man here. You could maybe pick him up for £1.50 and sell him on for £2 and that would be a nice little bit of profit and if you keep going and keep going you can certainly build this up. Now you will notice if I take the age down a little further the lowest price player increases to £2.51 and again to an 18 year old the cheapest 18 year old is £8. So clearly there's a lot more interest in these super young players because they definitely have the chance to break out into stars if they're already getting game time before the age of 18. Take Samuel Vignato, for example, here, you could pick him up for eight quid or so. The next one of him on sale is here, £16. Now, the chances are, because this is a little bit more money, people will do their research and might not actually spend £16 on him when they see his last sale was £8. But it's certainly something you can do with the cheaper players to make a profit. Here, though, if you did spend £8 on Vignato, you could maybe sell him for 12 13 and see a little bit of profit. Make sure you do your own research, of course. Don't just trust what I'm saying. Actually dig into the details and so rare data is a great tool for that. But what we can see here straight away is that as soon as a player gets a little bit of game time, their price increases. And the way we can tell this is because the cheapest 18 to 16 year old that's got at least one point in his last five games is eight quid. Now, if I remove this filter and go back down to zero, now the cheapest 16 to 18 year old is only £1.50. So you can see the upside here if that player can get just a little bit of game time. So what I would do is I would start with method one that I showed you where you're making little profits at a time until you've got say nine, 10 pounds in your account on so rare. From there, I would use this filter to filter in on 18 year olds, maybe even 17 year olds. You could go higher if you want to 2021s. But I think if you're looking for players with the biggest upside, 16 to 18 seems to be the place to be. And, and I'll be trying to pick up the cheapest version of all of these players that you can. So I'd be trying to sign a Luca Colosho here for about £1.25. I'd sign a Gorka for £1.50, Marcel Wienig for three quid, and I'd build up my So Rare gallery just having all of these players who aren't getting any minutes, but they are So Rare cards. And we know as soon as they get that one minute of football, we might see their price skyrocket to anywhere around £10 or more. So there's plenty of profit to be made there. And realistically, for the price of Vignato here, we could have picked up six or seven of the cards that we just looked at. And that's a lot of profit to be made. And you're only needing really one or two of them to actually get some game time for you to make some money. You could go even further into your research, say Vignato had never played before. You might talk to a fan of his club and find out, is there any chance of him appearing this season? Maybe the player in front of him in the pecking order has been playing poorly or he's injured and you might be able to find a real bargain there and maximize your chance of profit. So always do your research with these things, but you can see there's a lot of profit to be made. The same way if we go to the youngest 19 year old that's playing is Omar El Hilahi. He can be signed for £2.50. If we take it down to zero score in his last 50, we're seeing players for 80p. So even if we have a 19 year old who we sign for 80p starts playing, chances are we'll get £2 or more from him. And if you do that with multiple cards, you can definitely 
build up your profit. If you are someone who has a bigger budget to spend, then for sure, go for the rare cards and do the exact same thing. Now here, I would definitely do more research, use so rare data to figure out whether a player is overpriced or not and negotiate your value based on that. I would never buy a card outright on the manager sales market. Always try and negotiate and do a trade offer, even if it's just to save a few pounds. But using the example we were just looking at with the rare card, the cheapest player between 17 and 18, not considering game time, is Gorka here for £33.53. However, if we increase this now to a score of an average of one in his last five games, so he only needs to have got a few minutes, the cheapest rare player is £120. Now, I'm not saying you could flip that 30 20 pound player for 120 but there's a good chance you can make some pretty significant profit of course you are running the risk that this player never plays again gets demoted to a team in the fifth division and is no longer useful on so rare but that's why i say particularly with the rare cards do your research find the right kind of player for you if you are playing with these rare cards i would suggest checking the new cards auction market first because there might be a chance you can get these guys on basically the open bidding section a lot easier than you can here or maybe for a lot cheaper obviously you might have to wait a little bit and be patient and you should do that anyway always wait for your right opportunity but you can see there is definitely profit to be made here. Considering the risks and rewards, I would say stick to the limited divisions for this trading method, at least until you're very comfortable that it works, and then do a lot of research if you plan to get involved in the rare divisions. But that is my method to make money on So Rare. Again, part one, very much inspired by the great channel So Rare Adventure. But part two is, I think, something that you can add, particularly if you enjoy playing with young players or you have a lot of knowledge about potential wonder kids. I think it's a great method to use and a way to get your account up. For example, I've got five pounds or so left in my So Rare account after my last set of purchases. And it might be a good idea for me to now invest this into a few different cards that could potentially get some game time because as soon as they do get some game time their price goes up and sometimes you can make lots and lots of profit so i absolutely love this method there's not much to lose either when we're talking about prices of one pound two pound but even still do your research be smart with your money and just be aware of everything but hopefully you have found this video useful if you have don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more and remember if you haven't got involved in so Rare yet and this feels like something you'd enjoy sign up through the link in my description even if you want to play with the free cards and not buy any cards worth real money at least sign up with someone's affiliate link so later down the line if you do decide to get involved and buy cards from the new card auctions market you won't miss out on that chance of getting a free player added to your account so there you go everyone thank you for watching have a great day and i'll see you next time goodbye